Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the Shredder Show with Charlie Johnson, here to help you guys get lean and live the best life you can possible. So today's episode, we're going to go through a very common question I get, and like, what's the most important macronutrient for fat loss, and what's the most important macronutrient overall? Now, this is a very, very common question, and one that has a huge amount of confusion. So we're going to go through this in some depth, and then we're going to also talk through like what my favorite food choices are in terms of that macronutrient in particular. So to get things rolling, let's go into it. So what is the most important macronutrient for fat loss? So when we think about fat loss, what's our primary objective here? So it's to lose adipose tissue, body fat, right? So how are we going to be doing this? So obviously we'll be putting ourselves into calorie deficit. Chances are we'll be doing more cardiovascular work. Um, and that puts us, our body at a risk of a few things. Now, the thing we want to try and avoid here is obviously losing muscle tissue. So this is where people often balls up and they go too aggressive, do tons and tons of cardio, start lifting like a pansy, and guess what? All their muscle drops off and they actually look crap. So what we actually want to be doing here is protecting muscle tissue, focusing on recovery. Whilst our recovery is actually slightly impaired because we're in a calorie deficit and we're doing more cardio, so recovery becomes even more important. And how do we do this? Now, how we do this is we focus on making sure we have the right amount of correct macronutrient, which forces uh, recovery, allows us to build tissue, allows us to repair, is in every like cell within our body is very, very important, and that is protein. So protein is the most important macronutrient when it comes to fat loss. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. So first, as I was getting into there, we wanna focus on recovery and repair. So when we're in a fat loss phase, we're gonna be probably training a lot. There's gonna be a lot of oxidative stress on the body, and this is going to put a big stress on muscles, uh, ligaments, tendons, and also on our nervous system. Now, our muscles need protein to be able to repair themselves. So we want to keep this macronutrient high and in an abundance. But like, not an abundance, but make sure we have enough. I'd rather have more than enough than not enough, if that makes sense. So in terms of how much protein do we need, I recommend as a general that you look to have around a gram protein per pound of body weight. Now. Protein itself is low calorie. So for example, uh, one gram of protein is four calories. So therefore we can try and take the macronutrient fairly high and still get like shredded and have no issue with that at all and get the body we're looking for. So like that is not an issue in itself and having higher protein in terms of our calorie intake going high. So we wanna try and make sure that we have a decent amount of protein at every meal. And depending on like the size of the individual, I would recommend obviously different levels for say for most females, I recommend around around uh, 20 grams of protein per meal. So five, six times a day for most guys. say for example, if you're 75 to 80 kilos, I would say probably 30 grams of protein. If maybe you're 85 to 90, maybe 40 grams. If you're probably 90 plus and got quite a lot of muscle tissue, I'd probably go 50 grams of protein. Like, like that's what I do. Um, I tend to push quite high in terms of the protein side of things. So protein is the king macronutrient in terms of from a fat loss perspective we need to keep. One of the like hidden gems of protein, which a lot of people don't realize, is that you can also use protein as fuel in excess. So um, protein can be converted by glucogenesis into glycogen. So therefore, when our body is actually depleted of, say, for example, carbohydrate stores, and we're training and our body needs energy, we can actually convert excess protein into fuel that our body can utilize. So there is not an issue of like that, whereas you're better off having more protein than carbohydrates because it doesn't work the other way around. You can't convert carbohydrates to protein to uh, enable muscle repair, if that makes sense. So from this side of things, protein is a key macronutrient here. We really want to focus on, really want to focus on pushing for fat loss. In terms of the uh, different types of proteins I would recommend and sources I personally like. So there's a couple of things we want to look at here. So we want to look at like obviously the amino acid profile of each uh, protein source and every protein source will have a slightly different amino acid profile. Now with the amino acid profiles, because they're all different, what's the best thing to do to get a good mix of all of them is to have a variation of food. And it's also proven that you can become intolerant if you're just eating the same thing over and over again. So if you eat chicken five times a day, chances are probably in a, some time, you will find that sometimes you're, A, you probably hate chicken in the sight of it, and this is Nando's chicken, or you'll also find you start getting digestive distress where your stomach becomes almost inflamed because it's had so much. So that's why I'm a big believer in rotating like protein sources. So there's a couple of things you want to look at here. So we want to look at, if our primary goal is fat loss, we want lean protein sources. So we don't want really fatty meats, really fatty fish, 
not that some of these aren't good for us, but we want to try and focus on good quality, uh, low fat, high protein foods. So what would I look at? So for me, there's a few go-tos. So uh, the first one that I absolutely love and the biggest fan of is very lean red meat. And the particular one that I would recommend for a digestive purpose would be 5% steak mints. Um, because the way our, it's not what our body, it's not what we eat, it's what our body can assimilate and absorb. Now I would say something like a, a, some, a meat that's minced, like our body works in terms of digesting food on surface area. So almost with the food being minced, it's almost it's already got a bigger surface area, so it's almost like partly pre-digested, if that makes sense. So it's taking away some of the work for our bodies to be able to break down that uh, food and then assimilate the nutrients. Within red meat, we also have a very high amount of micronutrients and minerals, so we also have a high amount of natural creatine. So like this in terms of a protein source for me, I personally believe is probably the best one out there. So I would personally eat probably red meat at least twice a day. Um, I'm a big, big fan, and there's loads of different ways you can cut, uh, <laughs> cut it, cook it. Um, there are obviously are fattier versions of uh, beef as well. So any of you who follow me a lot on Instagram will see that I have become the beef rib king of the southeast of England uh, over the lockdown period. However, that appears to be no more now that we have got the shredded show going on, and I'm looking to get summer shredded again uh, as this post-lockdown crap buggers off. So like that has now moved on, but beef would be the big one I'd go for. So what other types of beef will we be looking to eat here? So 5% statements, I said, is absolutely killer. In, in addition to that, I'd recommend uh, looking at leaner cuts of steak. So what are the leanest cuts of steaks you can use? I'd recommend using things like rump steak. I'd recommend using things like fillet steak. Those are two very lean variations. And then there's a couple of others. Uh, you've got like a flat iron steak. If you're in the UK, I know Morrison Cell. And then there's also a variation, which is the uh, flank steak, which you get from Costco, which is absolutely banging. I'd highly recommend the Costco flank steak in the slow cooker is numero uno. Uh, I'll get a YouTube video out of this, how I do that very, very soon. But, and I've just thought of an absolute gem, which I haven't done yet. Let's do the flank steak in the slow cooker and then barbecue it. So that's going to be a new CJ coaching recipe coming soon to keep your eyes peeled for that. So that's food group number one I would look at. Food group number two, uh, in terms of my protein sources that I recommend would very much be actually whey protein. Now, whey protein is great in a dieting phase because the calories are very, very low. The fat content is low, the carbohydrates are low, providing you've got good quality whey protein. What's also advantageous about using whey protein is that you can get some awesome flavors and that can very much break up a diet and give you some more variation. So like, when do I like to use things like whey protein to fit them into my diet? So generally around the workout window because like the advantage of whey protein is it's the easiest protein to digest so it's very easy on the stomach and causes no bloating so i like to have that uh, either pre-workout post-workout or sometimes pre-bed so that is really a very very good time to use whey protein uh, in terms of whey proteins in different times like i'd recommend we'll go into more depth on this on another episode but the best uh, whey protein you generally would want would be a whey isolate the best proteins I recommend are the Muscle Nation version. I use the greatest flavor I've ever taken, tasted in my life, which is like crack, is uh, the chocolate honeycomb. I actually ended up training twice a day last year, pretty much, so I could have that almost like three, four times a day. It got very out of hand. Um, so I would highly recommend checking that out. And then also their chocolate uh, hazel hazelnut, which is the Hattie Boydell version, is very good. And also the chocolate flakes. I'm a big fan of all their chocolate flavors, so I would highly recommend checking those out. If you use code CHARLIE, you get 10% off. So that's why I said that's, that's uh, food source number two in terms of protein. Uh, food source number three that I would look at would be forms of uh, white fish, or I look at things like shrimp or shellfish. So again, the advantage we have with white fish is that the fat content is very low. And again, it's very, very easy to digest. So again, we want to look on digestion. Is our food body going to be able to assimilate this well, up, upregulate the nutrients into our body and be able to utilize them? So that's really the key here. In terms of white fish, I'll be looking at things like um, cod, uh, hake, if you're an American, you might be able to get tilapia, um, any white fish, tuna, like I love grilled tuna steaks. You can also use uh, tin tuna. Um, big shout out to the John West fridge pot ones, they're decent. And in addition to that, I love a couple of the ones you can buy, like um, the, if anyone watched any of my YouTube videos recently, I showed the Grilled squid rings you can get in M&S. They're not like calamari rings that are like uh, deep fried. It's literally like grilled squid. It's so low in fat, so high in protein and low in calories. They're awesome. 
that and also prawns, uh, cooked and peeled prawns, are also banging. Easy food you can buy on the go and great, great protein source. So that's protein source number three. My shredding uh, protein source number four, we'd be looking into would be egg whites. So shout out to two chicks. I get the bottles of those just because it's much easier and less hassle. So for around 100 grams of uh, egg whites, you're going to get 10 grams of protein. So that's a very easy way to add protein into your diet, a very low calorie point. That's something I'd really, really recommend that you guys do. In terms of uh, calories, as I said, it's around I think it's 40 to 50 calories per 100 grams. Um, so again, like it's pretty much as low calories you can get in terms of just pure protein. Again, easy to digest. Again, some people I do hear say with egg whites can get some um, digestive problems if they're having all the time, but it's not something personally I've experienced or really had with any of my clients, but that's definitely uh, one of the recommendations in terms of um, protein sources I would use would be egg whites. Next up, we've obviously got, uh, we come into the land of the poultry. So we've got chicken. Now chicken, I love chicken breast. I just had some before this podcast. I had chicken, pineapple rice post-workout, absolutely banging. And the reason like I do like chicken and I don't like chickens a couple of things. So chicken is great. It's very versatile. You can cook it loads of different ways. It tastes awesome. Um, amino acid profile is good, cheap. Uh, it's readily available. So that's awesome. The only downside that I personally am not a big fan of chicken is that generally the welfare of the animals aren't great. The way it's mass produced isn't great. And even if you buy the organic ones, they're still not like particularly well looked after from what research I've seen. Um, so that personally doesn't tend to sit particularly well with me compared to cattle, which is slightly better. Uh, like by means, this is no like animal rights podcast, but I am aware and conscious of um, the impact that I have on the world and also my clients from the world. So it's something that I do think about and how can I minimize my impact in that respect. So chicken is great, but you have to obviously weigh up the options of that. And I also think that sometimes the quality of you're buying a cheaper chicken breast isn't that great. So you'll get a lot of water in it when you cook it. It becomes pretty obvious from that respect. So chicken breast, great protein source, but just try and get good quality because uh, you'll really notice the difference if it's not. And then last but not least, in terms of the other poultry family that I tend to be a big fan of, which I've actually got my wife picking up a load for me today because it's shred fest is on. And this is one of the uh, main foods I really use when I try and really dial it in. And that's turkey breast. And what type of turkey breast? It's turkey breast mince, because again, I like it minced up because A, it's easy to like pan fry with those other vegetables and add more volume into the food without, without um, adding more calories. But it also allows you to um, digest the food better because the surface area of the food is wider. So these are the key components in terms of what I look at in terms of like protein sources, my favorites, and what ones I find most effective. As I said, throughout this podcast, protein is key macronutrient, key pivotal like macro we have to have in our diets to um gain muscle get lean and feel awesome and perform awesome like a lot of people are too scared of protein they hear the bullshit that like you get kidney issues and things like that from having too much like that's like an old wives tale it's like people telling you you eat too many eggs and you're gonna get bad cholesterol that's complete horseshit and something you probably read in the daily mail and like a gossip magazine so like be respectful of what you listen to in the media because just because it's written in the paper doesn't necessarily mean it's correct um, as you've seen, anyone who saw, I went on a massive rant recently about uh, Gemma Collins promoting a skinny jab, uh, which is basically like an injection they give you to lose, to suppress your appetite, and then they put you on a thousand calorie a day diet. Not probably the greatest idea, I would have thought, for your relationship with food or your body. So, yes, be wary of what you read on social media because a lot of it is BS. Now, to finish things off, the main macronutrient we're looking at is obviously protein. Protein is king. So, I hope this was helpful in this episode. Next episode, we're going to go into the deep dive in terms of fat loss, subjects to help you kick ass and get lean this summer. It's the biggest mistakes people make when they're losing weight. That's very, very interesting. And I'm sure you'll find that there might be some things there where you might find you've been self-sabotaging yourself if you struggle with this over the last few years and never been able to achieve the body you want. Now, if you're struggling in terms of your own progress, you're not quite sure where to turn, don't have a clue to where to begin with macros, protein, carbs, fats, calories, deficits, all this crazy stuff, then let me take guesswork away from you. If you use the link below, you can join the Shrednate or Sculptnate program. Shrednate's for the guys, Sculptnate's for the ladies. It's my proven formula to get you in awesome shape very, very quickly. It's worked for over 3,500 people in the last 12 months. So it clearly works very, very well. It's my own formula I've created over the last 12 years um, to try and create my own like, vision of where I want to be in terms of my own body and trying to have a sustainable approach. So if you'd like to get involved in that, 
program's only £37 a month. Hit the link below in the show notes. Hope you found this podcast helpful. Next episode will come up shortly. Please subscribe if you haven't already and drop us a five-star review. Peace.